Thanks again for joining us for today's webinar, how Curology uses personas to deliver high-performing personalized ad campaigns. Um, my name is Doug Roberge, and I'm a product marketing manager here at Segment, and I work on the Personas product. I'm joined today by Fabian Sealback at Curology. Um, I'll pass it over to him now so he can introduce himself as well. Thanks, Doug. Uh, yes, my name is Fabian Sealback. I'm uh, lead marketing here at, at Curology. Uh, I've been here for about uh, two years now at Curology. Um, over the uh, past 12 months, we have helped the company uh, grow three times uh, in its membership, and we're actually on, on track to triple uh, the size of our membership again in 2018. So thank you, Doug, for the intro. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Fabian, for joining us. Really glad that you're here with us today. Um, just want to quickly cover up on the agenda before we dive in. Uh, today, we'll be going on a quick overview of what makes digital advertising effective. We'll do a deep dive into what the Personas product delivers, and then I'll pass it off to Fabian so he can walk through his experience with the Personas product and what it's enabled the Curology team to do and the results that they've generated from it. And I'm really, really excited that you're able to share your story. I've heard it a few times now and it's, it's great. Uh, so let's jump right in now. Uh, what are some of those elements that makes digital advertising effective? Uh, when you think about the most effective digital advertising strategies, a lot probably comes to mind. You need good creative, it needs good visibility and reach, it needs to be on the right sites or platform, and so on and so on. Uh, those classic digital marketing elements. But even more important than that is it needs to drive returns for your business. Um, spending just to spend is not a scalable way to grow your business, and I think everyone on the phone can probably agree with that. Um, the benefit of digital performance advertising is that it's highly trackable. Uh, you can determine what returns you're getting from the ad dollars that you're dedicating to a specific campaign. And in order to really maximize the returns you're getting from that ad campaign, um, you need to balance cost and quality. The difference between quality and cost is that if you're getting a lot of low quality leads, you can't pay much for them. On the flip side of that equation, if you have high quality leads, you can pay more for them so you can outbid your competitors and still wind up in the black on your overall spend. At the end of the day, it all comes down to getting in front of the right users and your ability to convert on them. Uh, this boils down to really just one very important metric, ROAS, or return on ad spend. How much are you spending to acquire new users versus how much money will those new users generate for your business over their course of the lifetime with your brand? Uh, looking at just clicks or conversion can give you some false indicators and can really lead you down the wrong path. For example, say if you pay $1 to acquire a new lead and they end up spending nothing with you and churn after a day, um, that's not good. Despite the fact that your conversion rates for that campaign might be pretty good. However, if you spend $5 to acquire a user and they end up staying for months and spending $50, it's really clear to everyone that that's well worth the extra spend up front. So while this is a really, really simple example, um, it illustrates that beyond anything else, optimizing for ROAS is really the key to successful ad campaigns. How you do that is kind of another story. Um, some ways to do that are just to make sure you are using the right channels. So based on what you know about your best customers, where are they spending their time? And where have you in the past been able to constantly acquire those high value users for your business? You also need to be able to have granular customer targeting parameters that allow you to target better users for your brand. So if you know that your best users look a certain way, um, being able to actually implement that in your ad campaigns is gonna make all the difference. Uh, once you've identified that right audience, you need to cater your message to those users to improve click-through and conversion rates. That's pretty much uh, digital advertising 101. And finally, um, if you're doing any sort of lookalike targeting or retargeting off a static list, you really need to make sure that your seed audience, um, that target audience that I mentioned before, stays up to date as your audience changes and evolves. While this is no way an exhaustive list, uh, segment customers, and Curology will talk about this towards the latter half of the presentation, have found that mastering really these simple elements has enabled them to dramatically boost ad performance and results. So now that we've established some of the, the critical elements of effective ad campaigns, let's dive into the ways that Segment's new Personas product can really help you do that. Uh, but first, 
I want to I want to illustrate the challenge that we kind of were looking at or our customers are facing when we were going into the development process. Uh, 30 years ago, most businesses only interacted with their customers in person. These interactions happened in physical stores with a salesperson or a bank branch manager. And because these interactions always happened in person with the same person, it was possible for the store manager to remember each and every customer and really cater to that person's needs. But thanks to the internet, Apple, Google, et cetera, uh, the way companies interact with their customers has completely, completely changed. And this is not gonna be news for anyone on the call. Now you don't just have interactions happening in store and through salespeople, but you have them on your mobile app, on your website, you're interacting with them through email, advertisements, live chats, push notifications, customer service lines, the list kind of goes on and on and on and keeps expanding as we add new digital channels. The proliferation of all these channels had led to an explosion of tools and teams to manage those channels. That makes it really insanely difficult for your company to interact in a cohesive way with each customer. You can't deliver a seamless experience because it's really hard to merge conversations across each of those devices and channels together. And as we just touched upon, more often than not, you're gonna have different teams who are responsible for the different channels of communication or the point solutions that you're using. Amazon is a perfect example of a company doing this well. Um, when you go to their site, they show you relevant products based on what you've previously browsed. They show you relevant ads for potentially adjacent products that they're using or offering as well. They make it really, really easy for you to buy from them. So you go back over and over again. And it's really not just their website. Um, they're unusually good at understanding their customers across every single channel. A few, a few months ago, a team member of mine shared their experience of calling Amazon's service department to do a return. Um, they took care of that really easily. That's kind of basic blocking and tackling for Amazon. And then uh, said something really interesting um, along the lines of, by the way, we noticed that you haven't used your Kindle Unlimited subscription since March. Um, would you like me to cancel the subscription and refund back to March when you stopped using it? Now that is a really, really uh, impressive customer experience that built brand loyalty uh, and just faith in Amazon being a company that you want to do business with. But when you think about it, the infrastructure they have in place to make this uh, and this data pervasive across the company is ridiculously complicated and hard to build. They have to connect your usage across every touch point, turn that into a profile with your complete user history, and then they have to find a way to surface a clear synthesis of your state to the customer service agent. Um, that state being that your Kindle is underutilized. And unfortunately, uh, most other companies, with the exception of an extreme few mega giants like Facebook and Google, really don't have the time and resources to build out universal histories and synthesis like this. Um, it's an infrastructure problem, but because it's already happening, users are really starting to expect those experiences, which kind of brings in why we thought about building the Personas product. Um, so we looked at how Amazon and Google and Facebook, and we asked ourselves, how can we help more of our customers uh, provide this consistent personalized experience without having to build and maintain a ton of data infrastructure? Um, and specific to this conversation, um, as consumers ourselves, um, we were kind of interested in how can we also use this product to help our customers deliver better ad experiences for products that we cared about and for messages that are really going to resonate with us. Um, Segment today helps you collect data from all of your touch points. Um, you can see that bottom ring here in the collect. Um, again, websites, mobile apps, servers, or cloud sources like Salesforce and Zendesk. Unify that data in one place. You see that middle box here and then act on it by sending it off to your marketing and advertising and analytics tools. Essentially, Segment routes data from where it's generated to where it needs to go. Um, you can think of personas right there in the middle um, as the brain that's building an understanding on top of the data that you're collecting, helping you structure the raw data into universal profiles and computing new pieces of information and enrichments to those profiles in real time. Uh, while it may be clear to many of you, um, why kind of your business needs this cross-channel view. Uh, let's dive into why this is really important and what personas can do to you. Uh, first and foremost, it can really help you optimize your marketing funnel from acquisition through to long-term retention. 
Personas customers are using the product already to optimize um, their acquisition so they can acquire new quality top of the funnel leads. They're using it to deliver relevant and personalized messaging across channels and ultimately seeing an increase in conversion rates and value of each conversion that they are able to drive. Um, as a marketer, you want to acquire more users. You know, that's something that as a marketer myself, I can say it's always something that we're looking to generate as a team. Uh, we want to drive new QOs, uh, but not just any users, right? You want the most qualified leads that will get you the most out of your product and that will actually be able to use the product as you've intended um, or use the, the service that you've provided. Um, by combining all of your in-app behavior data alongside say purchasing or subscription information, uh, support data, you can really find your best converting customers and scale them through your paid channels. Um, with better return on ad spend, you'll be able to confidently also spend more uh, knowing that you're getting the best returns. This goes back to that ROAS equation that I showed just a few slides ago. If you know that you're able to generate returns, you're actually able and willing to spend more on those users because you know you're gonna get something out in return. Um, also, uh, engagement. So making sure that once you get users, uh, once you acquire users, you are engaging them in the right way. So for users that are currently in the buying process, um, after that initial conversion event, it's critical to understand what products or services that person is most interested in, uh, what channel they prefer to engage on, and what the next best action is to drive them to convert. Essentially, what can you do as a company to engage these customers with your product or service and maximize that initial investment you made in acquiring them in the first place. Uh, Personas allows you to understand your user's product affinity, preferred channel, even time of day when the user is most active, which then enables you to customize your messaging, channel, timing, all of that to ensure you're providing a, kiss, a consistent experience post acquisition. And finally, um, to kind of complete this cycle, once a user converts, you can immediately exit them from all marketing campaigns um, that you have going on. Um, this not only prevents messaging overload, but it also allows you to redirect your marketing dollars towards those users that are likely to convert and stop wasting on those that have already converted. Um, again, this is a logical step you can take to easily increase your ROAS. And if you think about it as an example that we probably are all had, um, you look at a mattress online or a product online and then it consistently follows you around the internet even though you've already purchased. That's essentially wasted ad dollars that you could have been targeting towards people that are likely to convert. Um, you can also use suppression to make sure that you aren't spending money on other segments that you know are unlikely to convert as well. As Fabian will dive into in the next section, um, if you know that a user has churned for a specific reason, say they no longer live in a serviceable area, uh, continuing to direct ad spend to them really, really is a waste of your, of your valuable ad dollars. So now that we know what's possible, let's talk about how it actually works in the product. Um, there are three key pillars to the Personas product. The first is identity resolution. So this is to help you know uh, who your users are, no matter which channel they interact with you on. The next is trait and audience building. Um, this helps you to identify important user facts, interests, and signals from the heap of raw data and use it to create new traits and audiences. So if you understand that um, while your event stream might look like, you know, user X purchased once, purchased twice, purchased three times, uh, being able to actually compute that into an LTV metric is gonna be more valuable than that stream of raw data. And then finally, activation. This is the part of Persona's product that enables you to get those traits and audiences into every customer facing tool you're using. For example, what we'll talk about later, Google AdWords and Facebook custom audiences, where you can actually then use the data to deliver tailored messages based off the user's history and what you know about them. Uh, for today's conversation, as we've kind of already alluded to many times, and for what Curology will be sharing in just a moment, we're focusing on those advertising tools. Um, although, Personas does work across many different categories on the segment platform. So the first new feature that we'll dive into is this identity resolution bit. Um, identity resolution is a major new upgrade to the segment platform. Uh, the new identity graph that we've implemented merges complete history of each user into a single profile. 
no matter where they interact with your business. Um, how, how it works is it uses a deterministic algorithm. Um, so once one ID is associated with another, it's appended to a user's profile and all that past history is merged automatically. Today we're working with anonymous IDs, user IDs, and device IDs, but this graph can be extended to incorporate custom identifiers that you are using yourself and will soon support um, custom merge logic as well. Uh, for instance, with identity resolution, you can click into a specific user and see all the events associated with them, their traits and their IDs. It's really a holistic view of each and every customer that interacts with your brand in the past. As mentioned, um, I think a lot of our customers are really, are really happy that this works for anonymous visitors as well. So when a user comes to your site and hasn't logged in, personas will create a record of them and then merge it into their full profile once we're able to mat ma match it, excuse me, based on an identity fragment that we've collected before. So say if they come to your website, they do a number of things, then they decide to log in. Um, we would match that anonymous profile with that store profile that we already have. Uh, the next step here, and the next um, product feature is, so once you have that raw data and you're putting that data into profiles, um, is to understand the people behind the data. So what are their interests? What are their tendencies? What are their preferences? Um, to do this, Personas lets you build computed traits or aggregations on top of the full history of interactions with your users. For example, um, we mentioned this, you compute a uh, user's average order size, preferred product category based on the number of times they've purchased it, last item viewed but not purchased. Each trait um, that you create really enriches your understanding of users and can help you serve them better. Once a trait is set up in the system, um, it'll be computed for all of your users and kept up to date as you learn new information about a user. For example, if you set up a computed trait and a user moves from a dormant category to a big spender, that information will automatically be recorded in personas and then federated to all the destinations that you are sending that information and that computed trait to during the next sync. So you never have to worry that the segments you're using when set up in personas are gonna get out of date. Um, next is audiences. So at the most basic level, this is gonna be news to no one on the call here, their audiences are groups of users based on a set of criteria that you define. Um, audiences and personas are then automatically, uh, people are automatically entered and exit to them as they engage with your brand. So if someone then um, all of a sudden spends a lot with your brand and qualifies as a big spender, they'll be automatically entered into that audience without any work done on your side. Uh, personas allows you to centralize your audience logic, uh, much of which is fragmented today into email campaign builders, SQL queries, or raw data. So if you kind of think about that, instead of building the same audience in each and every one of your end tools and hope that they're similar, uh, you really can flip the equation and create audience where the data originates in segment so you know that it's always gonna be the same and consistent across each and every one of your tools. So in that case, if you have a number of different teams kind of working in different tools, you can at least make sure that the audience that they're working with is consistent so you can deliver a consistent message or consistent advertising experiences. And lastly, activation. Uh, Persona syncs your computed traits and audiences to your marketing, support tools, optimization tools, so you can deliver really consistent personalized messages um, to every customer. So think about uh, you create one segment, you send it to your email tool, you send it to Facebook custom audiences, and you send it to Optimizely, and you can then use all of that information to then deliver the same experience. You can also sync customer profiles from personas into your warehouse for easier analysis of particular segments. For example, you can define an audience of your high value users, sync that to AdWords and Facebook custom audiences for building lookalikes, and then also sync it to your email tool like Braze and Iterable, Iterable excuse me, to enter them into a loyalty campaign. This is gonna end up being a really awesome experience for the end user. And with all of that data and personas, um, the profiles, the traits, the audiences, they're also available programmatically via our profile API, which you can see in that bottom right-hand corner. Um, we're seeing product and engineering teams uh, incorporate the profile API into their application so they can actually dynamically personalize in-app experiences based off um, that 
user understanding that profiles that personas is delivering. Um, with that quick product overview, I'm going to hand it off to Fabian to talk about how Curology has actually used all this technology to um, talk about some of the things that we, we mentioned are possible. So we'll let Fabian take it over now. Great. Thank you so much, uh, Doug, for, for running through uh, Persona. Be before um, I dive into how we use uh, Persona at Curology, let me just uh, start with a little bit of background about uh, what Curology is. So, we're a um, Series B funded startup uh, that delivers customized skincare for whatever quirks uh, your skin might have. We're uh, currently very focused on the acne market. So with that, our, our target audience is roughly 13 to 29, uh, Gen Z, millennial. Um, what makes us unique uh, in that market is that we customize our treatments for each one of our patients. And so the way we do that is uh, when you come to our site, uh, you go through a sign-up process, you fill out a quiz about your skin goals and your medical history, and then you actually upload uh, photos of uh, your skin. And then our in-house team of medical providers down in San Diego reviews all of that information and comes up with a personalized treatment plan for you. And they then prescribe a custom formula for you that our in-house lab uh, actually mixes and then sends to you on a monthly subscription. And then as your skin changes over time, as you use our formula, uh, we will also change that formula over time. So your treatment plan always um, gets updated as you go through that process. So that to, to start off with a, a little bit of background. Diving in, when we were um, talking to, to Doug very early on in segment, what got us excited to join uh, the beta of our phone personas were a couple different uh, things. So first of all, the, the challenge we ran into is that we were often looking to create a, a number of small granular audiences for our ad targeting, which resulted in us writing lots of different SQL codes, spending a lot of time on that. And then the second pain point was even once we'd written that, then we needed somebody to go in and update those audience on a recurring basis. So again, going into SQL, downloading the data, prepping it, uploading it to five different ad platforms. Uh, both of those uh, very uh, time and, and labor intensive. And ultimately they had uh, downstream issues uh, that, uh, that also hurt us. And those were one, we weren't updating our existing ad audience often enough uh, with uh, some of the exclusions that we wanted to do, for example, we're a subscription business. Once somebody has purchased, we don't need to target them anymore. Um, and so we weren't updating those lists qu uh, quickly enough, or we weren't updating our, our list of people who had now churned out and we're actually eligible to be targeted again. So that led to uh, um, a fair number of, of wasted ad spend. And then the, um, the, the second challenge was uh, that that led to was that in the ad tools, our audiences would get stale because we weren't innovating and creating new styles of audiences fast enough and also of the audiences that were performing well, we weren't updating them fast enough because it was such a manual process. And so ultimately, that was a, a very unsatisfactory situation for us, which got us very excited when we, when we heard about personas. Of course, underlying all this, um, as Doug already mentioned, is that universal customer profile. The universal customer profile, also an element that we found particularly helpful, especially as the world around us as, as marketers has pretty drastically changed. With Apple's recent decision to really uh, make tracking so much harder based on our existing technology, using uh, the con continued identity sources that are still available to us, around the email address and the device IDs and so on, and adding more to that and getting more sophisticated around identifying those users um, has been absolutely critical to us because the, the, the standard old retargeting technology of, of the old days, uh, fundamentally after Apple's decision, just really isn't working anymore. So leveraging the, the universal customer profiles from Segment was critical for us to have the confidence that when we were passing the data into these ad platforms that we were actually hitting um, the right people. So 
so let me chat a little bit about the various areas how personas helped us. The first is really the audience uh, creation and federation process. That's, that's the underlying piece that, that enables all of this for us. And really, where this helped is, is on a number of different uh, in, on a number of different levels. First of all, because now we have a graphical interface in segment personas, different uh, people on the marketing team, those without or with limited SQL skills, now actually have the ability to create audiences uh, very quickly, define them, and also iterate on them uh, in a very fast way. And so, what that's allowed us to do is actually we experiment with new audiences and, and more granular audiences a lot more quickly than we used to. Uh, instead of in the old days spending about an hour writing a very complex SQL query and then error checking the data, making sure it's all correct, and then uh, uploading it to test it, because it's such a quick and fast process, we often now play directly um, in personas during a meeting while discussing these audiences to see if they're actually viable for us, if they have the required size, for this to be, be an interesting test for us. So it, it's really enabled us uh, on the innovation side. The other thing is because the downstream impact of now continuing to download this data from SQL and uploading it again into the ad platforms, because that downstream uh, workload has been taken away, it's actually enabled us to go from only using a few relatively large, relatively broadly defined audiences, it's enabled us to really sub-segment and go very granular and detailed in our audiences and leverage that more granular targeting, which of course makes our advertising more efficient. And then the third element, how the, the audience creation and, and uh, process has really changed the game for us is that because it combines both the events that the user uh, takes on our platform or in their life cycle, but also uh, the trades. We now often use events that are much more real time. Uh, because we knew we weren't updating the audiences, we typically used relatively stable criteria uh, for our audiences. But now, since the updates happen automatically with Persona, we actually use uh, events that can happen uh, within an hour time frame versus uh, typically we define used to define our audience by things that would happen in days or weeks and, and so that's allowed us to to completely change how we define those audiences the way we're using that and the way that's helping us uh, here at Curology is that first of all we are focusing on increasing the the value of those users that we're targeting and we're doing that based on identifying the high value users among past subscribers. So specifically here, it's allowed us to create the seed audiences for, for example, Facebook lookalikes or lookalikes on other platforms based on a number of different criteria and has allowed us to play with those criteria to see what points of value um, actually work extremely well in those ad platforms. We also know the differential value between different types of users. And so by segmenting those out, um, we, it allows us to not only target them more appropriately and bid more appropriately, but also more importantly, uh, change the ad creative, which creates a, a second level uh, of efficiency for us. So here um, on the next few slides, I've got a few examples for you. So what you can see here, this is our relatively generic ad creative and it's really for everybody. You can see on the, on the left side, it doesn't matter what your skin condition is, this ad will work for you because we're, we're talking to all of it. Uh, similar element on, on the right side. But then when you go to the next slide here, what you have is you have ad creative that's specifically dedicated uh, towards teenage girls. It looks like the gifts are unfortunately not coming through. Uh, what you should be seeing here is, uh, an in, in ad creative that specifically talks uh, to these teen girls. So it starts off with, girl, don't pop your pimples, use Curology instead. And so there specifically, we know that that ad creative, because we're breaking out not just a simple male-female split, but we're also going down to the age group, and we actually have ad creative here as well that talks to where they are in their sign-up flow. It allows us to specifically target 
um, their stage, uh, where they are, who they are as a customer, and through that dramatically increase uh, the efficiency in getting that customer to come back to the site and complete their purchase journey. And so in a, in a similar way, we've done that here for, for the uh, parents as well, where we have a specific ad that is directly targeted at the parents. It specifically shows teenagers here and then also speaks directly to the parents in the closing sections of the ad. Again, we know that when we specifically uh, talk to the parents, engage them, uh, talk about the elements that matter to them, we know that the efficiency of our, of our ad campaigns dramatically increases. The second way that personas helped us is we, it allowed us to be a lot more granular and thoughtful in how we targeted members that churned but we believed could be won back. Um, as a subscription business, of course, cancellations uh, are of prime importance to us, and we really want to know and understand why uh, somebody might decide to leave us. Um, as I shared in the beginning, and most of our customers are 13 to 29, um, that the young age group that we have with a very heavy uh, demographic set in, in the college age years is typically an age group that is, is often short on money. And so we know that a, a large number of our patients canceled because um, they spent uh, too much time either uh, going out or having too many um, expensive coffees at, um, at Starbucks, and now they can't afford their chirology anymore, even though they want to use it. And so what, the way we've been able to use segment personas is leverage the data from our exit survey to specifically understand why somebody canceled and then identifying among those what our likelihood is to get them to come back to Curology and hit them with a specific campaign based on that cancellation reason. Uh, Doug already mentioned it. We're a telemedicine business, so we operate in, um, in most of the states in the U.S., but not all. And so, for example, if I now know that somebody canceled because they moved to a state that we're not available in, I don't want to target them because I have no chance of winning them back. But if it's, they canceled because they spent too much money, I have a very good chance of winning them back because their acne hasn't gone away yet. They still need my product. And so it makes sense to, to advertise to them and to, to break that out for them. And so what you can see here, depending on the cancellation reason, we have then different ad creative as well. So here specifically, we're looking at the person um, that has the price focus. So somebody who um, just didn't feel that they had those $20 available. So we try to compare it to a number of other elements to encourage them to think about what other costs um, they uh, might want to consider um, cutting in their lives to afford their curology and, and help their skin. In comparison here, this is a, a, a more drastic ad creative. This is more for somebody who, who questions the value of curology and has more of an ROI focus. So here it's all about, think about all the other products that you might be purchasing or buying instead of curology, and are those products actually helping you more? What we typically hear from our patients is that they've tried a large number of other products and they finally succeed with us. And so we drive that message home here in this particular ROI focus. Or we also have some members who expect our product to be a magic bottle uh, or a magic trick and just work overnight. Um, as much as I wish that was true, uh, unfortunately, that's not the reality. Um, our medical team um, always uh, lets our new members know that it takes somewhere between six, eight, 12 weeks um, to really see uh, those differential results uh, that uh, people expect. Some members are very lucky. They see results after a couple of days or two weeks, but that's not the case for everybody. And so for those members who we know uh, canceled early on because they were just too impatient, we again here have specific messaging to let them know that they should stick it out, keep calm and stay with us. And we specifically share stories uh, from members who were similarly impatient, but were able to, to stick it out, stick with it 
uh, apply the curology every day, and then saw those results um, after some time. So that's how by breaking out what we know about our patients, the detailed information, the journey that they've gone through, where they are in that journey, and also why they canceled, how Personas has helped us really hit them with much more targeted messaging and targeted creative through um, a variety of channels, uh, both email, ads, uh, and so on. So that's, that's been a, a game changer for us, and, and we've, we've seen really fantastic results here. And, and then the last part that really was a, a game changer for us is, is really the automatic audience update process. Uh, I mean, you see the cat here frantically typing. That sadly was the reality before then because somebody had the poor job of doing the, the, the frequent downloads and uploads into the wide range of app platforms. And it was just a really um, dull job. Nobody wanted to do it. Uh, it led to a lot of employee unhappiness on our side, as well as just a lot of time spent on it. It, it just wasn't a cheap process. And so that's really the, the amount of happiness we created among our user acquisition team by switching to personas and having this more automated process, especially in a very tight uh, labor market like uh, San Francisco, where employees are, are relatively pampered, uh, really is a, is a very big uh, difference for us because I know it will actually help in the retention of our team members here. So of course, um, I'm sure you want to know those all interesting campaigns, but what did they actually do? So let me uh, walk you through the results that we saw um, at Curology. So we ran a number of tests uh, with personas, and um, we were particularly excited to see this 10% reduction in ad spend while we held conversions constant. And so that was particularly driven by improving how we were negging out certain audiences and not hitting certain people that had already converted or were never going to convert. And it was really just a, an efficiency and, and cutting spend that we knew was wasted, but we didn't have the tools to get rid of that wasted spend in a, in a, in a viable way. So very exciting to see, to see that 10% reduction in ad spend. What got us even more excited though is when we, through those more targeted ads that I described, when we actually also saw an improvement in our campaign performance. And so that was really amazing. Uh, once we layered those more targeted efforts on, to see that relatively drastic uh, improvement in campaign performance, which then enabled us to have more profitable audiences reach uh, more customers and overall that contributes, of course, to, to the growth of the company. And then, the last piece, as I mentioned, just the, the dozens of hours that we've saved and that make everybody a lot happier. Um, definitely a, a big, big win for us on, on that end as well. So thank you very much, Doug, for, for letting me share the, the Curology story and how Persona uh, helped us. Uh, it was honestly our pleasure. This is a great story and I love hearing about customers using a product that we've been working on uh, for a while and, and such great success. So thank you again for sharing your story with us. We actually had a few uh, great questions come through, um, some for me and some for you. So I'm going to start uh, running through them now. Um, the first question is, does segment, segmenting in personas replace segmenting in a tool like iterable or other marketing automation tools? And the answer to that question is yes. So once you create a computed trait or an audience in segment, uh, what will happen is any user information that's sent to iterable will be tagged with that information so basically once you get to the iterable platform uh, those users will kind of be ready to place into a specific platform. Uh, so they work together um, for tools like facebook and google adwords um, we send the whole audience list over so it's kind of ready um, to use immediately when you hit those platforms another question um, i think also for the segment team is, does the data structure of universal customer profiles sync well um, to tools? And yes, so because segment is already um, really connected into the ecosystem of tools that we have, we have over 
250 on our platform today. Um, the data structure is already created to work seamlessly with a number of tools on our platform that we already connect to. So that's actually one of the huge benefits of kind of letting segment run your audiencing is that that audience is, is consistent and then can be consistently shared to connections that we already have baked into our platform. Yeah, and Doug, what, 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 uh, what is actually, I mean, we, we've seen it on our side, the, the, the huge benefit of the universal uh, profile and segment is that you have a lot more data points. Uh, our old standard way was just uploading email addresses, which have only a certain match rate because the email address you might have used to sign on with us might not be the email address that Facebook has about you. And so the match rates are actually higher with the additional information. Yeah, that's a great point. Thank you so much for adding that. Um, next question is for Fabian around some of the some of the events you mentioned. So um, I think this question came right around when you're talking about using the events you're tracking um, on your website to uh, target people more specifically. Can you go into some more detail about what those events are? Sure. Uh, the, the events that, of course, matter to us are, are, are events in, in terms of uh, what a customer has done in their life cycle. So it's uh, have they, uh, for example, changed their formula while they were with us? What path are they on there? Um, okay. How often have they been in touch with their medical provider? Um, have they had, uh, have they had a, a, a customer service incident? We sent them a bottle uh, and it broke while it was shipping and we needed to send them some, something new. So there, all of those are, are signals for us in, in terms of how good has the customer experience been? Are there things that, that went wrong? A lot of them are outside of our control. I mean, we use third party shipping services. And so based on that, knowing what our chances, for example, of, of winning back a customer or what our right course of action should be. Yeah. Great, uh, I think that perfectly answered that question. I think um, it goes to show sometimes we, because we're so in it, we talk about events and that's basically what users are doing on your website and what you can kind of learn about them. Uh, next question, which is a great one, is how does segment handle historical traits? For example, a trait changes that you wanna track over time, uh, like zip code. So basically how segment looks at traits um, is that it will be, once new information is provided, traits are updated every time a data, data is refreshed. So depending on your sync schedule, um, that will be actually um, changed in the system and then there'll be a record of that change. When we're thinking about historical data overall, um, what's different about segment versus some of the other competitors that we see in this space is that once you create an audience, um, we'll actually do, because we have access to all that raw data that you're already collecting, a historical look back. So we pre-populate that audience um, with users that meet those criteria, rather than, which is oftentimes the case, creating that audience and only looking at users that meet that criteria um, going forward. Um, so again, great question. Moving pretty quickly, because I want to be conscious of everyone's time. Um, is this product used mostly by marketing teams or product teams as well? So another great question. While we did focus on the advertising use case today, um, and Fabian, Fabian did a great job with that, um, product teams also use this. As you can imagine, events that might happen on a website for Curology um, could also happen in another way and a logged in experience in a product. So say for example, we're a segment, we're using this product ourselves. Um, we like to see when a user has signed up for segment, started an account, but has not uh, connected a data source. Um, we know that's a great time to actually follow up with an email to see if they need uh, more support. Um, we can also then use some of those um, events that we're tracking in the system to then retarget users or target lookalikes uh, similar to Fabian's use case as well. So that's a great question. Um, one more for segment and then one more uh, for Fabian, and then we'll, we'll call it. Um, is there a list of destinations that Persona supports? Um, yes, absolutely. So if you go to segment.com backslash docs, uh, you can click on the Personas tab at the top, which will give you all of our documentation about the Personas products. I encourage all of you to look at it, check it out if you're interested. And within that, there's an activation section uh, that has all of our listed supported destinations. And the last question for Fabian is how do you deal with uh, users just before renewal, for example? So for example, do you ever 
come across a situation where you are, you don't want to target users right before, but start targeting them after if they don't convert. Is this something that you ever think about or are there similar things that you think about as well? Yeah, so at Curology, we're typically in such close touch with our users that we don't really think of that uh, renewal period because our, our subscriptions renew uh, on a monthly basis. So if I was trying to exclude the period uh, before, then I, I wouldn't really uh, be talking to them much. Uh, I've certainly seen uh, thoughts like that at other companies uh, I, I've been with in terms of trying to not uh, talk to users or trying to specifically talk to them. I think that very much depends on the, the use case of your users, how you're set up, uh, what your relationship and your communications cadence is. I think every business needs to find its own, uh, its own optimal way of doing that uh, through a number of A-B tests and, and understanding what the users are looking for and, and what their expectations are and what will ultimately make them the happiest. Yeah, absolutely. And I think similar segment, it's all about um, testing to understand what what that cadence should be and how much is too much and what kind of touches can be really helpful in driving that renewal. Um, this was great, Fabian. Thank you again so much for sharing your story and thanks to everyone who joined us live. Um, we're really happy to be able to share some of the personas and Curology's use case with you. Um, have a great day. Thanks again.